this is my complaint about the level two guidelines. They, uh, there are too many caveats. There are too many details. And for many of the finer details, it's been left up to the local governments. America made this mistake. They, they had hundreds of different regulations across the U.S. for COVID. And they're still battling COVID. They still have outbreaks continuing, even though many more people in the American population have been vaccinated. So why would Taiwan make the same mistake? And Taiwan's an even smaller area. Why go from having very clear guidelines to very obscure, hard to understand guidelines? Basically, you need a guidebook to follow these. It's a mistake, and I'm calling out the Taiwanese government on it. It's a mistake, and I would not be surprised if we have another community outbreak of COVID in Taiwan as soon as level two takes place, as it starts. Because as you make the guidelines more difficult to understand and follow, the fewer people will, fo will follow the guidelines. It's that simple. Uh, I, my guess is that the Taiwanese government was under a lot of political pressure to reopen kindergartens and daycare centers from parents, also from uh, you know restaurants and entertainment venues uh, who have lost business during the the level three lockdown, and so they've come up with these muddy guidelines for level two to try to take some of the pressure off of themselves, uh, off the central government. But I think it's going to backfire, and we'll have to wait and see in the next few weeks or so. Uh, I'll get back to you and see how, uh, tell you how the COVID effort in Taiwan is going. Okay, today's uh, topic is about um, Taiwan's reducing the COVID restrictions to level two. And Here's my problem with the level two guidelines. They are extremely difficult to follow compared to level three guidelines. So in one of my earlier videos, I talked about Taiwan's handling of the COVID um, pandemic in Taiwan and how in the beginning, they had one of the best responses in the world one of the quickest and most effective responses to to the spread of COVID in the world. And then they squandered it when they reduced um, mandatory quarantines for pilots to only about three days. And, and this allowed the virus to, to spread into the community in Taiwan. Well, um, fast forward in mid-May, of uh, this year, 2021, um, Taiwan realized that the community spread of COVID was out of hand. And so they instituted level three precautions, which were basically like a soft lockdown. People were still allowed to go to work except for teachers. Indoor gatherings were reduced to five or seven people. Um, and they banned a lot of outdoor activities like swimming, um, surfing, diving, things, all things of that nature were limited, restricted, and also restaurants were required to stop indoor dining services. So when the government instituted level three, the soft lockdown in uh, the middle of May, uh, they were quite clear about the guidelines, and um, it wasn't hard to follow the guidelines that the government set forth for level three precautions. And we've been in level three precautions ever since. Uh, like I said, we will finally end level three precautions um, 
on July 27th and that's um, let's see May was the fifth month so it's been over two months uh, that we've been in level three okay so on Friday the Central Epidemic Command Center which is uh, part of the Taiwan's CDC Centers for Disease Control issued its guidelines for level two and this is where I think Taiwan is making another mistake. The first mistake was limiting quarantines to five days for businessmen and three days for pilots and that allowed the the virus to spread into the community. Uh, the current mistake is the convoluted guidelines that were given for level two that starts next Tuesday. Okay, so uh, I haven't even gotten to the guidelines and already uh, noticed that the CECC is um, is putting its responsibility off on local governments. And let me tell you why this is a big problem in Taiwan. Taiwan's not like the U.S. It's not a big place. People can easily travel from one end of Taiwan to the other in in a few hours. So um, if you have different guidelines, if you allow different local governments to make different guidelines for COVID response, then you're going to confuse everyone because people can and do travel a lot within Taiwan and they don't necessarily keep up with the local guidelines for each city or each county. So that's one big problem. Instead of having one voice, which Taiwan has pretty much had from the beginning, with the exception of restaurants, um, a couple of weeks ago I think Taiwan allowed local governments to make decisions on restaurants and all but one decided to keep indoor dining closed. But up until this point, Taiwan has been pretty consistent. They, they've pretty much every area has had the same guidelines. So changing to local determination of guidelines is going to confuse a lot of people. Um, let me interject here that um, socially safe distances have not been mandated. I, I have not seen them being um, mandated in any public space. Uh, so far in Taiwan during even during level three so I, I'm skeptical about uh, socially distanced people uh, being enforced by the authorities I, I don't think that's going to happen okay number four crowd control in business and public areas social distance of at least 1.5 meters in indoor spaces and one meter in outdoor spaces Again, I've seen many markets, um, you know, outdoor markets in Taiwan where the people are elbow to elbow and definitely not one meter apart. So I think this is basically unenforceable. Uh, there's another problem. Um, right now, I don't think Taiwan has enough vaccine to fully vaccinate all teachers, including public, private, and cram school teachers, two times. Okay, the article says they also must present proof of a negative rapid screening or PCR test within three days before starting classes with subsequent screening every seven days. And the article doesn't say, but um, I've heard that the schools or the teachers will be responsible for the cost of, of the um, uh, PCR tests or rapid screening tests which can run into a substantial uh, sum of money over time. So my uh, cram school has decided to remain closed at least until August 26th, or 29th, sorry, August 29th, uh, given these guidelines, because right now they are basically prohibitive for many schools, many cram schools. But notice they didn't mention public schools in this. 
So um, I don't think the same restrictions apply to public schools. And I do believe the virus can spread just as easily at a public school as at a cram school. So, um, so I'm kind of confused about the guidelines for um, cram schools and that they're not applied for massage parlors. Maybe the thinking is, you know, uh, there will be fewer people visiting the massage parlor, so that might cut down on the number of transmissions. I'm not sure. Now, if they're open in the claw machine shops, I'm wondering why are video game arcades still under the ban? Go figure. Now, I've heard that uh, for private uh, kindergartens, that only 80% of staff need to be vaccinated, fully vaccinated. Um, but again, I'm not sure about that. Okay, yeah, it does say in this article, it says the requirements for kindergarten and after school programs uh, are essentially the same with the exception of vaccine requirement for kindergartens where 80% of teachers and staff must be vaccinated before classes can begin. Okay, this is another confusing thing. Uh, they've lowered the restrictions for kindergartens, but kindergarten students, anyone who's taught kindergarten before knows that kindergarten students put their hands everywhere. And um, it's pretty much impossible to stop them from putting their hands on surfaces and then putting their hands in their mouths. Um, and so I would consider kindergartens to be, you know, uh, a problem area for COVID spread. Whereas a lot of cram schools uh, teach older students who are more likely to follow guidelines than kindergarten students and more likely to understand the guidelines. Again, all right, thank you for watching American Teacher TV, uh, American Teacher on YouTube. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section below. Bye-bye.